Welcome to today's webinar, SEO and SEM for your small business. Tips and tricks to optimize your marketing efforts. Hello, I'm Simon Heseltine, Vice President of Audience Growth at Trader Interactive, parent company of commercial truck trader and equipment trader. Before I begin, I want to share a little background about who I am and my experience so you'll know why you should even bother listening to me when it comes to SEO and SEM for your business. I've worked in-house at Hewlett Packard Enterprise and led award-winning teams here at Trader for Rent and also AOL. I also taught digital marketing for five years at Georgetown University. And pre-COVID, I was a frequent speaker and trainer and moderator at conferences around the world on a variety of online marketing topics. So let's start with why you should care about SEO and SEM. Whether you're in the equipment industry or the commercial truck industry, your SEO and SEM strategy can make or break your online presence. Your online presence is extremely important because as you know these days, everything is digital. If you're intimidated by SEO and SEM, I'm hoping this webinar can help change that by providing real, easy to follow directions for implementing these processes. Being successful with SEO and SEM is easier than you may think. Today, I'm here to walk you through why SEO and SEM matters, how they work better together, and share some tips and tricks to help you implement both effectively. So today's agenda is gonna cover, well, the SEO and SEM overview, how SEO works, how SEM works, how they work together, and then those tips and tricks I was talking to you about. So let's start with a quick overview of SEO and SEM to get everyone up to speed. SEO stands for search engine optimization. It refers to the process by which search engines crawl your website's content to see how effective it will be to attract traffic. Search engines like Google will assess things like keywords and links, then give the page a ranking based on over 200 different factors and show it to people who want to find your business based on their search criteria. In today's webinar, I'll refer mainly to Google since it makes up the majority of searches compared to the other search engines. Now, with SEO, there is no cost required to incorporate the basics into your digital strategy, but learning how to do it well and bring in traffic takes time and technical knowledge. Traffic that comes from SEO is called organic traffic, which also means that you didn't pay for it. You did. You showed up in search basically through optimizing your website, not by spending any kind of money on advertising. If you get these basics right, it can help you leap above your competition in those search results. So here's a quick example of what organic search results look like on Google. Say someone is searching for lawnmowers. Um, through your SEO efforts, your website could show up in the organic search results section as shown by the yellow arrows in this example. Google typically shows the URL of your page, the title of the page, and the description of what the page is about. Now, let's jump to a quick overview of SEM. SEM stands for search engine marketing, and this is where the money part of it comes in. SEM is a general term for many different types of paid search advertising. For example, a business will spend money on a Google ad and see it at the top of the search for a specific term. SEM requires a different set of knowledge and strategy compared to SEO, as well as that budget I was talking about. But compared to SEO, you can see the results very quickly. So think of it like this. Organic traffic comes from the efforts of SEO on your pages, whereas SEM brings the paid traffic through your bidding strategies, uh, with both giving you the potential to outrank your competitors and be the first result that the users see in the search engines. So here's an example of how paid search results appear on Google. The most obvious difference between organic results and paid results is that you see the word ad in bold before these results. This lets you know you're seeing them because they were paid to show at the top of the search page. In this example of lawnmowers, you'll see a carousel of shoppable links with images and another paid ad shown directly below it. If you keep scrolling down, you're eventually going to come to those organic results. So you can see why getting up high on paid can be worthwhile. SEO and SEM play a major role in your digital marketing efforts. How your business appears on search engines can make or break how many potential customers are viewing your site and essentially your business and your products or inventory. It can be one of the most effective ways to generate new leads and it allows you to compete with larger companies and competitors in your industry. So let's do a little bit of a deeper dive into how SEO works and what you need to know. The first thing you need to know about SEO is that it takes time. 
Google takes time to recognize and reward your site for any SEO efforts. So if a site's new, it probably won't get noticed by Google right away. Since it lacks immediate results, an update you make today may not show its full potential for up to several months. And Google is constantly making updates and changing its algorithm for determining rankings. But don't let any of that discourage you. The long-term results of showing up highly on page one of search results can be a huge payoff. So like I mentioned before, search engines crawl your site. The crawl looks for three main things, quality content, user experience, and quality links from other sites. Let's dive into each a little bit deeper. Quality content is a major factor that Google and other search engines use when determining how your site will rank. Basically, quality content is anything that Google decides is worth sharing. That's legitimate information, uh, the relevant keywords, and then also having unique and readable content or examples of creating quality content. So let's talk about the first part of that, the legitimate information. Is your business delivering relevant information around topics your audience is searching for? For example, if someone is searching for details on what type of inventory you'll sell, you're going to want to make sure you have clearly labeled categories listed on your inventory pages and a description of what each category includes. If someone wants to find out about your dealership's reputation, make sure your about page clearly states your mission and offerings or features testimonials from your actual customers on your site. Maybe someone just wants to find out how to contact you. So make sure your contact information is visible in multiple areas of your site, specifically your main contact page. Always make sure your NAP is easily located. What's NAP? NAP is your name, address, and phone number. Avoid unclear or confusing messages. Definitely avoid spelling mistakes, or and don't forget to include information that someone might be looking for. If someone can't find what they need from you, they'll go and look elsewhere. So now let's talk about keywords. Your SEO keywords are the keywords and phrases in your web content that make it possible for people to find your site via a search engine. A website that is well optimized for search engines speaks the same language as a potential visitor. So when you're writing the content on your website, you'll need to include keywords that a person in your industry will be searching for to help Google connect them to your site. Determine phrases and words related to what your customers might be looking for and then use a keyword research tool to verify and refine. I'll give keyword examples and some helpful online tools a bit later. What you don't want to do is keyword stuffing, which is pra the practice of shoving as many keywords into your page as possible with little or no rhyme or reason. Again, Google wants your content to have quality over quantity. So keyword stuffing is a huge no-no. In fact, Google might even penalize you for it, which means you may lose out on some potential traffic that will go to your competitors instead. Now, your content should be unique, meaning it's been written from scratch by someone who's an expert or professional in that topic. And don't forget, you've got those in your dealership. Again, search engines are looking for websites that have the most readable and shareable information. If you are simply copying and pasting from other websites, not only is that kind of wrong to do, but the search engines, when they crawl your site, will figure that out, and your rankings will definitely suffer. So long story short, stay away from duplicate content. Now, is your website designed well and easy to navigate? Can your visitors find what they're looking for? Uh, user experience matters because you ultimately want users to submit a lead on your site. But if they click on your site and leave without taking an action, you not only miss out on that lead, but it could also be a signal to Google that your website is not a good resource for those searches. Same goes for how quickly your web pages load. Let's look a little bit more closely into each of these factors of user experience. What does it mean to be designed well? Um, think about websites that you visit frequently. Are they visually appealing? Are the brand colors represented on the website? Are the images clear and related to the site topic? Is it easy to navigate? Can you get around? Are there search bars, tab pages, and pre-filled searches to help consumers navigate the site and get to what they're looking for? Is the website a quality resource? Will they find what they're looking for? Or will they be led in circles? Are there helpful links to more information about your business or service? 
Is information provided easy to digest? Like the quality content I mentioned before, Google analyzes the website's resources to help make sure that those best help consumers and therefore are ranked higher. Do the pages load quickly or is there a delay? Right now we're actually working on this ourselves. Some of our sites are taking a little bit longer than we'd like to load due to the size of pictures or videos or the code. We're working to fix that. We're reducing image resolution and generally speeding up each and every page so that those load times are faster. Remember, if your website takes so long to load that users are abandoning ship, this can cause you to rank lower on Google. By keeping these components of your user experience in mind, your SEO rankings will improve and search engines will organize that, uh, to recognize that, and they will rank your website higher. Another important factor to incorporate on your website are links. Does your website link to other websites? Do other websites link to yours? For example, let's say you have a car dealership and you're an authorized Ford dealer. You'd want to have a link to the Ford website on yours to show that you're part of that community, as well as having a link back from the Ford site that lists you as an authorized dealer. Ideally, the more good quality relevant links you have coming into your site, the better. So what do I mean by relevant? I mean, it could be a link from a local site, such as your local chamber of commerce, or it could be a contextual link from an OEM, such as the Ford one I mentioned a moment ago. Or it could be something from an online industry trade magazine or organization that perhaps does a feature on your dealership or about something that you've written or something that you've done. Link building takes time, but it pays off in the long run and can be fueled by that great unique content I had just mentioned. What about internal links? How well do you manage those internal links on your site? For example, you're an equipment dealer and you mentioned in your About Us page that you sell skid steers and excavators. Do you actually there link to your skid steers and excavator inventory listing pages? You know, those internal links help Google to discover all your pages, especially your important pages as they're crawling around your site. The other thing that's important about internal links is the anchor text that you use. If you're not familiar with the term, the anchor text are the words that are hyperlinked, the ones that you click on. So you see here each of the bullets under the quick links has the anchor text or the link text there. Google sees those words each time there's a link and actually takes that as information about what is on that page. Internal links also give you a way to show the search engines how your different pages are connected and drive tra traffic from one page to another. You really want your visitors to stick around and engage with your content. So providing helpful internal links is a great way to make that happen. So whether it's a person or a team you have internally, or you have to hire them externally, it's important that you also implement technical SEO. This means in addition to everything we've just talked about, you also need to do things like, well, set up your website correctly, use the correct meta tags and implement schema and more things to optimize your rankings. There could be an entire webinar dedicated to just technical SEO. So for the purpose of this one, I'm just gonna walk you through these three at a high level. So when creating and setting up your website, you need to choose your domain name carefully and choose a reputable website host. Uh, your website setup will need to prioritize user experience and intuitive navigation, which I've already just talked about as well as a design that focuses on speed and efficiency. You'll also need to use the correct meta tags. Now, meta tags are needed so that Google knows what the page is about, and they should include your target keywords. Your title tag is what will most likely show up as the title of your page in the search results when a user is looking for the content you have. The description meta tag is a call to action for that page, and again, should include the keyword, and again, will most likely be shown in the search results. You'll also need to optimize other tags, such as your images and your headings. You know, they have appropriate tags. So it helps that Google has a description of what they are, which also allows for more opportunities to optimize your page with keywords. But again, no keyword stuffing. Only use your target keywords and relevant synonyms where they make sense and incorporate them into the tags and the text of the page. And then I'm gonna get into schema now. Schema, I'm just going to, again, touch on really quickly at high level. It's one of those things that 
it's something you should know about so that you can say to your developer, go ahead and do it. But it's not something that you necessarily need to know how to do. So what is schema? It's code that you put on your website in the background. The user never sees it, but it helps Google contextualize the content of your pages. For example, this text might be your phone number. This text is your unit price. This text is your star rating. Uh, this example that I have here is for Cheddar Biscuits. And it shows how Google can pull those pieces of content out through schema to provide more enticing, rich results for users. Now that we've covered a ton of SEO information, let's talk about how SEM works and dive into what you need to know there. SEM allows businesses to pinpoint prospects based on search terms. For example, someone who goes to Google and searches for a local mini excavator for sale is actively looking to buy an excavator. What SEM does is allow you to bid on the keywords like mini excavator and drive traffic to a page that lists them for sale. Small businesses like yours can benefit from SEM in many ways. Brand awareness for your company, generating revenue as soon as you get started, growing your business at a scalable rate, reaching people where they're searching, and really focusing on your target audience and customers, and also give you a bit of a competitive advantage. Plus, it's affordable because you're in control of how much you want to spend. It's also easy to track so you can know what's working and directly attribute sales to an SEM ad. I'll talk a little bit more about tracking a little bit later on. Before we dive into how SEM works, I want to go over some terms you'll encounter when it comes to SEM. Uh, impressions, how many times your ad marketing campaign was visible on a screen. Your CPC, how much you pay when a user clicks your ad, that's cost per click. Your CPM is your cost per thousand impressions, another way to pay for a search ad with a goal of visibility. And your CTR is your click-through rate. That's the percentage of people who saw your ad and clicked on it to go to your website. You'll hear SEM referred to as the parent term for pay-per-click or PPC advertising campaigns. Uh, to reach audiences searching for a particular product, and in your case, equipment or commercial trucks. PPC is the most recognizable type of SEM campaign, and pay-per-click just means that you only pay when people actually click on the ad. When you search on Google, as we talked about before, you'll notice the first few results that pop up will be flagged with that bold ad because they are paid advertising spots. If you purchase a PPC ad, your business could reach potential customers by targeting certain keywords. Not only can you reach potential customers, but depending on your targeting, these could be some of the lowest funnel customers and easiest to convert users. Someone searching for the local mini excavator for sale or mini excavators for sale near me could be potentially in your dealership signing paperwork within hours or days. It's very important to be the most noticeable and most helpful search result they see. Your CPC strategy starts with choosing the right keywords to bid on. That means you'll have to do some research to determine what those are. For example, think of keywords and terms specific to your brand or terms that describe your units or your company. Um, excavators for rent, used semi-trucks for sale. You know, phrases like that. Also think about how a consumer would search for those terms. You know, think about the fact as well that not everybody knows the inside industry acronyms. Again, I'm going to give you some tools and a few more examples a bit later on. Your budget should come into play as well because some of these keywords will cost more to bid on than others. So SEM keywords are the terms and phrases that you target in your search engine marketing campaigns. When users search for those keywords, if you're paying for it, they'll see your ads. When you set up an SEM campaign, you choose the keywords you want to target and or avoid. SEM allows you to prioritize and organize what keywords are driving traffic to your site. Um, for these keywords, I'll use trucks as an example, but the same types apply to uh, equipment as well. Phrase match keywords. These target the exact phrase plus any phrases that have words that come before or after the target keyword. For example, best truck dealers near me. And then breaking down that one phrase in different ways. Exact match keywords. These are target words that are very closely related to the target term. This includes misspellings, singular plural, stemmings, abbreviations, reordered words, paraphrases, or closely related words with the same search intent of the exact match term. Now, negative keywords. 
These exclude keywords that you don't want to target. You could use this to help you not appear in searches for terms, uh, you know, say, say somebody's searching for backpacking and tent camping options. By incorporating negative keywords, you can avoid popping up in searches that may be out of your target demographic, and therefore you don't run the risk of spending money on searches that are never going to convert for you. So let's talk about keyword intent. It's important to note that not every ad will appear on every search related to your keywords. Some keywords don't just have enough intent to justify incorporating ads. For example, typing what is an excavator into Google most likely won't result in any ads because there's no intent towards a purchase. But local excavator will show SEM ads. Even if your keyword is a good fit for an ad, that doesn't mean you'll win the bidding. It's dependent on your maximum bid and your ad's quality score. So what's the quality score? The quality score is an estimate of the quality of your ads, your keywords, and your landing pages. It's actually reported from 1 to 10 in your Google Ads account. The more relevant your ad is to the searcher and how likely the user is to click through and have a good experience factors into your overall quality score. For example, an ad that wouldn't be rated below five, maybe one that has the headline, cat equipment for sale, cat beat our prices, um, but then that actually doesn't have the cat inventory on the page or they have a page with no relevant content related to the ad or maybe the page won't even load, you know, things like that. A quality score of 10 has all the right stuff from relevant quality content to fast load times. Once you're ready to put your money where your keywords are, you'll need to enter an ad auction. So let's focus on Google Ads for today's purposes. Every ad you see at the top of the search results goes through an ad auction before showing up. To enter the auction, you need to clarify how much you're willing to spend on each keyword on your list. And then the ad auction is automated based on both your budget and how related your landing page is to that term. If Google determines that the quality of your page is higher than that of your competition, you may rank higher than them and be charged a lower CPC because you're doing a better job at providing the right results to the user. Setting up SEM keywords is not the only way to utilize SEM. You can also set up ads that appear based on geographic distance to your dealership or ads that relate to visits to your site. Targeting keywords tells a search platform when to show your ads. SEM targeting takes it one step further. Through targeting, you set additional parameters for when your ad should show and who it should show to. Location targeting sets ads to only show to people who are within a certain zip code or a geographic area. Ad schedule targeting sets ads to only show at certain times of the day or during certain days of the week. Device targeting sets ads to only show to users on specific de devices, such as mobile phones, uh, desktops, or tablets. And demographic targeting sets ads to only show to people who fit certain demographics, such as age and gender. So I know we've covered a lot of information. You're starting to see why most businesses hire specialists for both SEO and SEM. There's a lot that goes into both. And you're going to want to do both because they work better together. Your search engine strategy should be just as important as your overall marketing strategy as content, social media, emails, and more. Plus, as I've mentioned, SEO can take time to start seeing results. So while you're waiting on those to kick in, SEM can be something you're able to implement fairly quickly. For example, if you just launched a new website, you can prioritize setting up your PPC campaign in Google Ads. Uh, since it's going to take a while for those SEO rankings to be established from your site. Another important distinction to make is how much you spend on SEM does not impact your organic search rankings. So although they are both impactful, your spend and your organic ranking are completely separate efforts. Because most people search online before buying anything, big or small, having a strong digital presence is crucial. Using a combination of both SEO and SEM strategies can boost your visibility long term. People will be able to find your business by organic results from SEO or by paid results from SEM. If your website is SEO friendly, then SEM has a greater chance of being successful for you. 
Think of SEO as the foundation for good SEM. When each is set up properly, you have a better chance of increasing your conversions and therefore your sales. So now you know how SEO and SEM work and how they work better together. Let's walk through those tips and tricks to help you improve your strategies. The first step in a successful search strategy is to dedicate someone or some people to lead the charge. Whether it's designating someone from your marketing team or hiring a freelancer, you need to have someone who is able to dedicate time and energy to SEO and SEM. As I mentioned before, Google is constantly making updates to its algorithms, sometimes small and targeted, and you know, some, about three or four times a year, they do these large core updates that impact many businesses. So a dedicated person should be well-versed in best practices and continue to be on top of the latest changes as they occur so you don't fall behind your competition. If you don't have the resources or the personnel within your team, especially to handle a lot of that technical SEO stuff I mentioned earlier, chat with others in your industry and ask for a referral. You may, you know, you want to make sure that you've got a person or people that you trust to handle your search strategies. A referral ensures they have a good track record for success. But if you're having trouble finding help that way, you can always do an online search yourself for SEO and SEM specialists or agencies for hire. Now, this one's not so much a suggestion, but a true necessity in this day and age. Make sure your website is mobile friendly, meaning it is easy to access and navigate from a cell phone or tablet. In fact, Google crawls mobile before desktop now. According to Statista.com, 64% of all Google organic search traffic is from mobile devices. So optimizing from mobile greatly improves your search rankings, and not only optimizing from and not optimizing for mobile can really hurt you. So again, Google is all about the user experience, and if your website is seamless across desktop and mobile, your chances of showing up higher on search is better. Uh, the URL I have listed on the slide is a great place to check and see what Google thinks about your site. So just go to search.google.com slash test slash mobile dash friendly, or just go search for Google mobile friendly test. Enter your site's URL, and you'll find out what Google thinks about your site. So what are the best practices for mobile optimizing? For starters, if your website is just showing on mobile as a mini version of your exec desktop site, you're probably in trouble. It is a poor user experience to have to zoom in on text or have images cut off because your website isn't responsive. Having a responsive website is best practice for SEO. This just means that your website is able to respond or adjust to the device the person is using to view it. Now, depending on how your website is hosted, your website may already be responsive. You can double check by you know, visiting a site like this one, ami.responsivedesign.is and typing in your URL. If it's not responsive, you can work with your SEO expert to ensure it's updated to B. And again, if you have to hire someone to get awesome, unique content written for your site, do it. Keyword and rich copy on your website is what's gonna bring people in. In your About Us page, describe what your business does, what manufacturers you sell, partnerships you have, and anything relevant that a new visitor would want to know about you. In your Contact Us page, again, Make sure to get that map in there, your name, address, phone number. Get a map of your location, your email address, and any way that a person could possibly reach out to you. Social channels. This is not only your chance to drive incoming leads, but again, it helps your appearance in search to have all these details clearly listed. And content just doesn't mean what's listed on these type of pages, but also on your actual unit detail pages. If you have uh, inventory listed for sale or rent, we like to use the acronym PAID to easily remember what it is to include on every single listing page. Paid stands for the price of your listing, clearly shown, the appearance in search results by including the keywords and the descriptions, the images and videos. Uh, we recommend having at least 25 or more per unit, and the descriptions that include a mix of technical and persuasive copy. Speaking of content, if you don't already, Consider creating a blog for your website. Don't be afraid of blogging. Not only is a blog super helpful for SEO purposes, it's also a great way to add value for your visitors. 
Your blog posts don't have to be long, robust articles. They can be as simple as a list of the top 10 most popular work trucks of the year. And you can just list out and describe your most popular sold units. You can also consider hiring someone to handle the writing and posting for you. Or even have some of your sales folks write something. They are experts in your field. Many people looking to buy a new unit might be searching for sale near me, units for sale. But what about those just starting to dip their toes in the industry? Those who are searching for top tips for first-time buyers or even a seasoned buyer searching for top places to buy or rent near me. By creating this kind of blog content, you're helping your website to appear at the top of searches for those maybe not looking for just a unit. By creating the content, you build not only your SEO, but your reputation as an expert in the field as well. To first-time buyers, building this trust through articles can create the connection between your brand, your salespeople, if they're writing the posts, and these new consumers. So focus on content and the technical health of your site, but don't just make sure there is content and keywords, but also that your site is set up to be easily crawled. I would recommend at least a quarterly audit of your website's technical health, especially as you're regularly adding new content and pages to your site. Remember, Google's continually updating, and what worked yesterday may not work as well today, may not work at all tomorrow. So here are some general best practices on the technical side. Fix any broken links that may lead to error pages. It's a poor user experience, and it reflects poorly in search. Ensure you're doing that internal linking I talked about earlier. You know, link from your content to other content within your website or to other relevant website pages. Put all text on your images. Um, this is just basically a two to four word description of the image. It can help you actually show up in the search engines for image search. And it's also very helpful under the Americans with Disabilities Act in that it's what is read out by a screen reader. Ensure that your pages have the unique meta description tags, as I talked about earlier. This is that call to action. It explains what this page is about. And here you can see an example of a meta description in the search results page. When it comes to SEO and SEM, and having and using the right tools is a must. For SEO, Google has a suite of tools, like the Google Keyword Planner, that can help you determine your keyword strategy and analyze traffic patterns. If you have a blog on WordPress, uh, there are plugins like Yoast that can automatically set up your post to be SEO friendly. Plus, there are other sites out there like moz.com, hubspot.com that give you detailed tips and tricks around SEO. You can also use free SEO report tools like Lighthouse, which is a Chrome extension from Google that gives you an idea of where you can improve your page quality score and your page speed. And the free web developer extension in Chrome can help highlight some of those technical adjustments that you need to do too. SEO can all seem very vague. Um, how do you know if it's even paying off? So this is the Lighthouse tool that I mentioned. Um, you can run a free SEO report on your site using this. It gives you a better understanding of your site's actual SEO. There are a number of reporting tools out there that will come through your website and give you a score based on the likeliness that it would appear in search. You can use this report to give you an idea of what you need to improve and help guide you in adjusting your approach to capitalize on the opportunity for this free advertisement through search. Now, tools for SEM include things like SEMrush, which allows you to conduct keyword research, site audits, and traffic analysis to find opportunities to rank for keywords. Plus, you can use it for various SEM efforts, like finding where your competitors are focusing their ad dollars. You can analyze your regional presence in search and determine how much to spend on certain keywords. There's also an ad tracking software, like the one on HubSpot. Uh, this allows you to see how your SEM ads are actually working. One caveat here, if you're local and don't have a, a large presence, you might not register on tools such as this. My last tip is to track everything you're doing. Check and analyze your keywords, your page views, your bounce rate, your social engagement, and more. And you can do all of that by using a tool like Google Analytics, uh, which you can find at analytics.google.com. All these metrics can help inform your next strategy by showing you what's working and what's not working so you can adjust and improve. You want to be at the top of as many search engine results pages related to your business as possible. And tracking your efforts is the only way to get there.
Don't let all of this hard work go to waste. Regularly check your views, engagement, and the messages you receive to your pages. If you use Google Analytics to monitor your site traffic, the best way to see how these videos drive return is by tagging the URLs you share in your posts with tracking codes. Google offers a free URL campaign builder to help you structure and track these different efforts. Again, your technical SEO person can help you with setup and answer questions you might have around reporting too. So to recap, we discussed what SEO and SEM is and how they work and why you should have them work together. Then we went over seven tips and tricks you can start implementing or improving upon today, which included dedicating someone to focus their efforts on both SEO and SEM, optimizing for mobile so your visitor has a great experience on their phones too, creating SEO-friendly content on your website and your listings. Remember that paid acronym. Uh, creating a blog. If you don't have one already, you know, it's really going to up your content game. Remembering those technical SEO best practices and continually monitoring and updating your site. Using tools for both SEO and SEM to help set you up for success. And then tracking everything from keywords to page views and more to continually improve your strategies. So I, I hope you found this webinar helpful and useful. Um, thank you for viewing it. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions or suggestions on future webinars. Our email address is listed there at marketing at traderinteractive.com. And of course, if you're in the market to buy or rent equipment, go to equipmenttrader.com. Or if you're looking for commercial trucks, visit commercialtrucktrader.com. Thanks again, and the best of luck in all of your ongoing SEO and SEM efforts.